Good morning. Good morning to you. We trust you're having a good morning already. We're thankful that the Lord is with us no matter what is happening. And my husband's blood pressure dropped dangerously low this morning. He's losing weight at, on purpose. And but we found out that you need to call the doctor when you're losing this much weight. And contacted the doctor now and all is well. So let's just go to prayer this morning before we start our lesson and believe the Lord to help us and give us a peace and a quietness in our heart. I mean, I personally need that, and I know that there are many out there that need this too. So, Lord, we just thank you for the privilege to love you and to serve you, Lord, to honor you. We thank you that you have given us this wonderful plan of salvation, and Lord, that as we walk through this life every single day, you are with us whatever we face. We put our faith, our trust, and our confidence in you. We thank you, Father. Amen. Our lesson this morning is number 12. If you're with the, the now as far as the Assemblies of God, our quarterly, other New Testament letters. We have studied the some of the letters that Paul had written. And, you know, he did write a lot of the, of the New Testament. But there are eight letters in the New Testament that were written by somebody other than Paul. And so they're referred to as the general epistles. And John wrote two, uh, there were, Peter wrote two, and James wrote one, and then Jude wrote one. And there is some question as to who wrote Hebrews. doesn't matter to me. It's just a great book, whoever wrote it. And we're so thankful that they did. They were, and these letters were God-breathed. God was talking to these people. It wasn't just things they made up. Can you say for yourself? Jesus literally changed your life. I know it's real, trusting in the Lord. So it happened to me, and I'm sure many of you out there experience the same thing. Well, our central truth today is God's Word portrays the Christian life. Our key verse is 2 Peter 1 and 4, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. The key word you will find in the book of Hebrews, you will know, in fact, I read that it's mentioned 13 times, you'll see the word better. So these people are going through a time, as we have discussed in our just earlier Sunday school lessons, in that these people were having to go from law to grace. And we have to remember we can't think with the modern mind. They don't know what we know. And we don't, we can't, it's hard for us to read this and understand and kind of try to put our ourself in their shoes, what they knew, what they were thinking. This was brand new. They were so used to having to bring these sacrifices. And this is something totally different that has come to them. You don't have to do that. And so the Apostle Paul and these other writers here are telling us that Jesus is the way. You don't need anything else. There's no add-ons. You don't have to do anything with the law. But they had people coming in, false teachers, and they were saying, well, yes, you, do, you need to do the law, too. No, that was a burden that they could not bear. It wasn't right, and the Apostle Paul dealt with this. And here these other writers, they're getting the people to understand, yes, we're experiencing this too. We have experienced this grace, embrace grace. It was a wonderful thing. So the, our lesson today is going to focus on three things. At the, we're talking about the, the preeminence of Christ, and that Christ alone is our high priest and author of our salvation, and that faith without works is dead, and the love of God must shine through us to the world. This wonderful love that the Lord extended to us, such love, such marvelous love that he gave, him, gave his son, and his son was willing to go. The scripture even tells us, it refers to it, if I can find it here quickly, it refers to it as a new and living way. Therefore, brethren, since we have confidence to enter the holy place by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he inaugurated for us through the veil, that is, his flesh. And since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a sincere heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the perfect confession of our faith, of our hope, without wavering. For he who promised is faithful, and let us consider how to stimulate one another to love, and good deeds, not forsaking our own assembling together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another, and all the more, as you see today, drawing near. Well, I read more than I intended to, but it was so good I couldn't stop. 
that this is a new and living way. And that's what was telling these people this is a new and living way. So consider these things. He wanted them to embrace them. And he said, I, I know that it, it, you know, seems. We can live in the seams, and that's what can get us in trouble. It seemed like you had to be, do something else. But they said, no, it's faith and confidence in God. You can trust him because Jesus is He's the preeminent one. And when you look up that word preeminence, it says they, they passing all other superiority. And that word in Hebrews again and again says better. The law was not bad, but it helped because it was a good thing, helped to see we couldn't keep it, not without our whole our hearts being changed. And this is what Jesus had come to do, and this is what they were being told so they could know this, and you could put your whole faith, everything on this. You didn't have to do anything else. You didn't have to walk on broken glass. You didn't have to do all kinds of any other things to earn salvation. You couldn't pay for it with money. And we are so grateful and thankful today is that you don't have to pay. You can't pay anybody enough to do away with your sins. I've heard some people try, but it won't work. You know, it is just, it's just not that way. This Jesus Christ was the perfect sacrifice. The blood of bulls and goats and, and bringing of the, uh, they would bring oils and they would bring flour and all kinds of things to the Lord. This is done away with. It has, it served its purpose. And now this is the new and living way. Put your trust in him. This is the pre, he is the preeminent one. He was perfect. The high priest said he dies his life. And he, he you know, he was having to offer sacrifice himself, but Jesus he doesn't have, he's, he was, he died on the cross. He gave his life and he was raised from the dead. And we're so thankful that he was, he's victorious. And it becomes a cliche maybe, it isn't, but we just spout it off and say he's a, a, with, he's a victor over death, hell, and the grave. That is a tremendous thing. Think about that, over death, over hell, and over the grave. I mean, it was amazing what he did. And he is alive. Said so these high pri these priests, the high priests, whatever priests they were, they died, and they were having to offer uh, sins for themselves, and it was a daily thing, you know. But said Jesus, He's come. He lives forever, and so He's not having to. He doesn't have to go back and offer Himself again and again. He was perfect, and He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and that was signifying completion. He is complete. He's completed His work. He doesn't have to go through it again. But thanks be to God that we can come to the Lord. We have this way that we can enter in. There's not a veil between us like they had. And we don't have to go through somebody else and ask them to get God's attention. You know, we don't do that. It doesn't work that way. We have access. We can go directly to, to, our, to Jesus and we can pray to him. We go and we say, Father, in the name of your son, Jesus, and we make I request him. So let's think of the preeminence of Christ. It is superior to. It, it, it exceeds all others. Our Jesus. May we think of him and worship him. Be so grateful. We owe so much to him. Let us sing the praises to him and thank him for what he has done. And to know that we have access to come at any time of the night or day. What a privilege. We're his children. You know, children have privileges that outsiders don't have. You know, it just in, it, with your families. Your children have privileges that others don't have. Your children don't have to knock on the door. You, they don't, they're not locked out. You know, most places I know of, it'd be a rarity. There are some, though, that their children have to knock or have to use a key. But you, you, just, you can just go in, and you don't have to ask if you can go to the refrigerator. <laughs> it's just there's, a, there's something about being, being a, one of his, a child. We are children of God. We can come to him and not have to be worried and shaking in mortal fear that we would be uh, hurt, that he would lash out at us and be angry at us for coming. He's glad when we come. Let's go ahead and get into the second topic here that we have, the provision of faith. This was what was so hard for them, and I've already alluded to it in a way earlier, that they, they had a hard time thinking when you had these false teachers coming in and say, well, you know, we know that this is uh, Jesus is all right, but also, but the law, uh, you need, you know, and the, I don't know what kind of convoluted doctrine they were teaching, but that's what it was. It was heresy. And this was, it was actually, it was one of the, the 
awful, most, the awful thing they could have done. A mixture. There's something Jesus. I mean, I'm telling you, the Godhead hates a mixture. There cannot be mixing of this old that was no longer. It's it served its purpose, and now put you can put your whole weight, you can your whole trust, being everything on. This is our salvation. This is one point that he made clear here uh, to the as James was talking here as as he it's important that we understand if you go back from from God if if you go back and you say you don't want salvation and you want to live the way you want to live. And, there is no other, when it says there's no hope, you know, that there is no other way, though you might do whatever. In fact, I read of a, a play in India where there's this particular doctor, and they were told that their priest or whatever his title was, that when they died, if you would go, and these were people that were his followers and maybe students wanting to be like him, that if you go down to a river, and they could go and they could say a certain thing at 1,000 times. And well, of course, the person there, they said they, they would rise again. Well, they didn't. And I, one particular case I read in this and said, I know I was keeping track. He said, I'm writing down, I know I didn't miss. And said, why, why didn't my, my master, my priest, why didn't he, why didn't he come, out, come back from the dead? And they just told him, well, you probably miscounted. Oh, how sad some of the awful things are that are being told. When we have this new and living way, this is by faith. Do you really believe that Jesus is the Son of God? Do you believe that he can take away your sins and guide you? Yes. I answered yes as an eight-year-old girl, and I still say yes to him. So may we realize that we can come boldly to this throne of grace. We can respond in faith. He said faith without works is dead. So it was important to have faith in Christ. And he was talking about that you couldn't just say you've accepted Christ and then you don't do anything. Now, works, you can't get there by works. He made clear you know that, that you can't just work your way there. You can't do enough good deeds. I know some really fine people, and they are so good to people. They're always helping others, but they don't accept Jesus as their Savior. You know what they're thinking? It seems they'll say, but all these things that I do... And their friends will even tell them, well, I know you're such, and they'll tell you they're such a, that's a, such a good person. I know, I know Jesus won't turn them away. I, I, I know that, that they won't be going to hell. They're going to be going to heaven if they're not trusting in the Lord. And this is what James was making it clear. We have, there's one way, and that's Jesus Christ. It's believing him. Now, because we are Christians, we will do things. And I know there are many uh, churches, and like as far as our organization, the Assemblies of God, this is, one thing that they are known for, and as I know many others do this, but I know in particular, they don't go into a very poor country and just tell them about Jesus. They see those people are hungry. They see that they hardly have any clothes to wear. They will help them. They will, they will, they will not just, and like he was saying, you see somebody in need, you don't just say, uh, well, you just kind of ignore them and just, you just well, just pray, just uh, love the Lord. I want to tell you about Jesus. I tell you, he's, he's the good news. He can help. It's more than that. When you see that there is a need and you can help, or we can get somebody else to help. It could if you can't, but he can't see the need and assist those people. That's what he was saying. That's what Jesus would do when people were hungry. We remember the multitude, and there, and it got late, and I guess they were so enthralled with what Jesus was saying, and they were listening, and until uh, nobody, uh, you know, they noticed that realized it was going to be this long. Next thing they knew. You know, it's getting late, and they're getting hungry. And Jesus didn't send them home. The disciples said, you better send them on. We, we can't do anything. And, and Jesus said, yes, yes, he could. He found out there was a little little fellow, though, you know, had a little tiny meal. And Jesus said, bring it here to me. And the little boy gave it up. I don't think they had to take it away from him. I think he gave it to Jesus. But anyways, Jesus fed the whole multitude. So, you know, he can do, he can do anything. We just do our part for him, love him and serve him and love people, not just turn away when we see a need. Tell them about Jesus and help them in every way that we can. We want to be persistent in our faith that we never, never give up. In Jude, as he was talking to the people, that you had to fight. You had to contend for your faith. Yes, we have found that out. If you've been saved very long, you know you have to contend for your faith. There's things that come up all the time. People throwing into Satan, throwing things in your head. And your own mind can get all throwing crazy things in and things that are incorrect. What do we do? We don't just...
keep thinking on those things and just get all nervous and upset. What am I going to do about this? Go to the Word. Go to the Word of God and go to prayer. Go to prayer. And it's not just a bashing God. I didn't think this would happen and I don't. And tell him, we can tell him, yes, our needs. But let's not pray in like disbelief almost. Uh, that this shouldn't be happening because I'm living for you, Lord. But this is what Jude was explaining to them. You can expect things to happen that you don't like. You can expect hardness. But he said, told him to build yourself up on your most holy faith. Be praying, seeking God, living in the Spirit, walking in the Spirit. You need to be done. It's just not, well, when something comes, uh, I guess I will. No, you won't be ready. It stay, pays to stay ready. You know, the Apostle Paul told Timothy to be instant in season, out of season. And that's good for us. That wasn't just for preaching, but we need to be instant in season, out of season, because there will be situations, things that we can help people, and we're going to have situations come to us that are a direct trial to us, and the Lord it will help us through that. And he allows these things to happen, and they will, can build us up if we, are, if we study and pray and really reach out to him. makes me think of those people that are going to the Olympics. They train and train and train, and they don't want the least thing they could do. They, they endure hardness. They want things that really make them exert. What are they doing? They're building their strength. This is what the Lord does sometimes, is he allows these things to come, and it's not to beat us down. But this is what Jude was saying, is this. This is what we need to do. We pray. I, let's put it this way. You pray early, pray often. It's all day long. You know, life is subject to change without notice. So we need to be living in the Spirit, walking in the Spirit. So that's what he was telling them. He said, be ready for the challenge. And the Lord is going to be there with you to carry us through. It's very necessary that we have the love that fills our heart. This is our go to number three, the necessity of love. This You think of love, such love as the love of God. I was thinking of that song the other day was love, such love, such marvelous love. I'm grateful for that love of God. So he modeled love. He was love. He wasn't just something about love, but he was love. So the Lord help us to be filled with his love and that people can sense the love that will literally be emanating from us as we walk with them. Every, anytime they see us, they should be able, and may it be that they see the love of God flowing through us to them, and there is this desire that they can walk with God and talk with Him. You know, there are some people that question when we say that the Lord spoke to us, and I think maybe they think the Lord spoke out loud to us. I think that is possible. I believe it is on two or three different occasions in my life that I've actually sensed there's like an, almost like an audible voice that I just maybe got my attention and and gave me just a, a just a, a help and a relief that I needed. And so we just want to be faithful to the Lord and pray and seek his face and his word will speak to us. And this is what oftentimes it is. There are people who believe that you, you never can hear from God. Yes, you can. God's word. As you read God's word, every, there, how, everybody here that's listening to this, if you live for God any length of time, you've been reading the Bible, and as you read this scripture, all of a sudden it just seemed like it just, it just as we'd say, just captured, captured your attention. And it was just what you needed because this word is alive. You'll notice that if you're a new Christian, and you begin to read the Bible, and those of us who have been saved for a long time, that you can know as you're reading the Bible sometime, and maybe there's a situation that you're going through, maybe uh, you may be reading over in a, in a book, I'd be like in the law or something, and you'll think, well, I won't be anything here to help me. And it's amazing to me, whatever a situation you may be experiencing and been praying about and need some help, there is, you read that scripture, and you think, well, I never thought I would find this here. And all this, it just, and you just marvel. What do you do? Thank you, Lord. You're a marvel. You are a marvel. This is our Savior. The Holy Spirit here, too. It's all together. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit ministering to us. I tell you what, the Bible says the threefold cord is not easily broken. Such love must draw, uh, you know, from the believer determination to demonstrate the love to others. That the Lord has loved us. And you think of other Christians that have loved you, have ministered to you, when sometimes maybe we weren't the most lovely. But we're thankful that they did. And it's what that says to us. We need to do that. Be like that. 
Since God is love, not merely one who loves, his followers demonstrate that they participate in his nature of love by loving others. What a great privilege it is to know the Lord and to serve him. We trust that you have a great Sunday, and we trust that you can be in service, whether it's virtual or in the building, but take time for the Lord. He took time for us. He didn't have to go to Calvary, but he wanted to go because of his love. May God bless you and keep you. We'll see you next Sunday morning. The Lord will. Goodbye.